So right now, all the trees are the same size, the same color, everything's the same. So of course, we need some variations for the trees. And the first variation I want to introduce is the effect of the water. So I'm going to be using the flow map to control the colors of the trees. So put in the simulation data and uh, let's have a look at the flow. So I can use this flow map to control this green color here. Create a RGB node, green, and uh, put in a uh, RGB curve node like that. And put the flow to the factor. And let's have a look at the color. It should be a little brighter, or, or maybe not. Just make it darker and more green, less blue, maybe like that. Or maybe, yeah, even darker like that. Yeah, maybe that will work. I don't know. Let's try the end flow and see if it's better. I think in this case, the end flow is better. So anyway, we can now put this color in here to have this color like that. So now we have the color of the tree changes according to the amount of water. And next, we want some variations for individual trees as well. So move all of these away a bit like that. And we can use this color output of the Voronoi texture. So you see we have a random color for each cell and uh, we can use this to control the variation of the tree colors. So just separate the channels of the color. I'm going to use the separate color node and uh, I'm going to use the, these channels to control the variations for uh, this color here. So create a uh, hue saturation value node like that and connect the red to hue, green to saturation and blue to value. Okay, let's check out the color. As you can see, the variation is a little too much and we need to tone it down a little bit. So create a map range node for the red channel. And for the red channel, we will map 0 to 1 into 0 0.45 to 0 0.55, like that. And another map range node for the saturation. And this time, we will have 0.85 to 1.1. And finally, another map range for the values. This should be 0.5, and this should be 1.5. So now you see we have some very nice color variation for the trees. And uh, let's check out the trees again looks nice but as you can see we are now having a little too much trees and i want the number of trees to de decrease towards the edge of the map i mean the mask and that's a simple matter we can now call in the tree mask that we created earlier and this is the tree mask and it has to be from the geometry because this mask is stored within the vertices of uh, the mesh so we can use this to control the amount of trees around the edge so the first thing I need to do is to invert this value from 0 to 1 to 1, 0, right? like that. And I will add this with the uh, factor, like so. And let's have a look. And as you can see, towards the edge of the region, we have very small trees. And the trees get bigger towards the inside, like that. And I think the effect of the mask is a little too strong, so just create a multiply node and control the mask using this multiply node, like so. Okay, everything looks pretty good. But uh, we need to configure the color of the trees a little more. Maybe make them a little darker. Yeah, this looks a lot better, okay? But we are not there yet because in here, all the trees kind of have exactly the same size. They, they're kind of smaller towards the edge of the, the mask, but inside here, we have exactly the same size for the trees. And uh, I want some variations inside here as well. And to do that, I will be reusing this red channel. However, if we use the same red channel for the size of the trees as well as the hue, there's going to be a problem. Anyway, let me just show you the problem before fixing it. All right. So I can add this red channel with the, the, the F value here. And as you can see, the trees kind of lost a bit of the color variation, right? Because the greener one is now also the smaller ones and they're all pretty much gone and the bigger trees are also the yellowish ones so we kind of lost the uh, color variations and uh, that's a problem that's a big problem actually so we need another randomized set of values and to do that we just uh, create a white noise texture set this to 1d and drop it in here and eh, not like that all right like this so let's see now we have a different uh, variation here and a different variation here all right before, it's the same variation, but now from a single red channel, I ended up with two different variations using the white noise. And again, I want this to be less effective. So I will use the same technique, which is a simple multiply node. And 
again, lower this value to get rid of uh, some variation. I mean, to lower the effect of the variation. Let's say 0.3. Okay, it looks pretty nice. So anyway, let me just uh, rearrange these nodes so that it's a little cleaner and easier to read. Okay, there we go. We have some very nice fig tree for our background mountain. We can go further from this by adding some translucency as well as some glossiness to this, to these trees. So anyway, let me just do that before finishing this video. So create a translucent shader and uh, create a mixed shader. Put this into the second slot and then create a add shader. There we go. And now we can use this uh, slider to control the uh, translucency of uh, the trees. Next, let's just add in some glossiness and call it a day. So create a glossy material. And again, we will mix this like so. We just need a little bit of glossiness. All right, there we go. Everything is perfect. Okay, so now we have a very nice pine forest, but what about the other kind of trees? Because uh, right now all of these trees are like triangles coming up from the ground like that. But what if you want trees like this, right? So how do you do that? So it's actually quite simple, really. Let me just uh, go here. And uh, right after this uh, attribute node, you just need to drop in a float curve node. And you can use this float curve to control the uh, shape of the tree. So this section here is the shape of the tree. And you can control the shape of the tree by controlling this section like that. And uh, let me just go to the edge of the world so that you can see the trees a little more easily. So you see, we now have some very nice uh, layer on the top and you see the trunk of the tree here. And uh, let me just go back here and change the number of slices to let's say 40 or 50. So you see, we have some very nice trunk for the tree. Okay, we now have a different kind of tree using pretty much the same setup and we have zero performance hit whatsoever. Anyway, let me just go back here and uh, lower this to 16 once more because uh, we don't need a lot of slices for this technique to work. And let's just reverse back to the pine forest. Okay, that's it. We are able to create a very nice and very dense, high detailed forest with zero performance hit. You can have trillions of trees and the performance will just as fast. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.